Today we're going to be discussing carbon dating. Now carbon dating is this really really interesting technique that is used to estimate the age of dead living organism. It has a vital importance on things such as archaeology and can be used to estimate the age of objects up to 50,000 years of age. Now it relies on the fact that carbon has a few isotopes, in particular this carbon-12 which is just a stable isotope, but also there is carbon-14 which is radioactive. So this means that it will decay over time. Carbon-14, the radioactive isotope, is actually continuously produced in the upper reaches of the atmosphere by cosmic rays. Every once in a while you'd get a high-speed particle such as a neutron which might interact with nitrogen and the result could be carbon-14 and a proton. Now the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 is almost constant. It's always around this value, which you don't need to remember for the exam, about 1.3 times 10 to the power of minus 12. Now I hear you, how could this be constant if carbon-14 is continuously being produced? Shouldn't that ratio be changing? But no, remember there's also beta decay. So carbon-14 can actually turn um, essentially back to nitrogen via the process of beta decay, so that ratio remains relatively constant. So our atmosphere has a roughly constant ratio between the two types of carbon. Now, all living things, by definition, absorb what is in the atmosphere. So, if we were to answer a question on how carbon dating works, here is a sample answer. Our first point, let's just label that as point number one, is that the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 is constant in all living things. And this is our main assumption. Now, once a living organism dies, such as this, this tree, eventually if it dies, it will stop absorbing carbon. But however, the carbon-14 will continue to decay. Now, the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 is measured in a dead and a living sample. For instance, if you were to uncover a part of an ancient boat, for instance, that was made out of wood, this will be our dead sample, and a living sample might be a similar type of uh, wood of similar size that we can use to measure the activity of that sample. So, essentially, we can use the activity equation for this. Let me just uh, put all four points like that in which um, using this equation, A0 will be essentially the activity of the living sample. So this we presume that this will be our initial activity. So let's just write this down, the activity of the living sample. And A is the activity after time T has elapsed. So this will be the activity in a dead sample. So the activity in a dead sample. T over here is the time which has elapsed for the activity to decrease because the carbon-14 is decaying. Now lambda is the decay constant. Now let's use our knowledge of radioactivity to determine the decay constant for carbon-14. We actually know that the carbon-14's uh, half-life, so let me just write that over here, the half-life for carbon-14, let's call it C14, is actually about 5,700 years. Because the half-life and the decay constant are linked by the following equation, so lambda times t half-life, or the half-life itself, is equal to ln of 2. This means that our decay constant lambda will be equal to the natural logarithm of 2 divided by the half-life. So this will be equal to ln of 
two let's convert 5700 from years to seconds so this will be equal to 5700 times 365 days and um, each of those 365 days has 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds like so and if we put that into a scientific calculator we are going to get about 3.8 times 10 to the power of so 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 12 seconds to a power of minus 1 which is our decay constant so all we need now is a um, essentially an activity from a dead sample and an activity from a living sample and we are ready to rearrange this equation for t now how could we rearrange for the time let's quickly revise that our first step would be to write down our equation for the variation of the activity with time t which is what i've done over here our next step would be just to rearrange for that exponential so what i'm going to get is that a over a naught is equal to e to the minus lambda t now i'm going to take the natural log of both sides so what i get is that l of a over a naught I'm going to put some brackets over here is equal to the natural log of e to the minus lambda over t what I then get is that ln of a over a naught is equal to minus lambda t remember ln and e are inverse functions so essentially they undo each other leaving just minus lambda over t now i'm going to multiply both sides by minus one which actually flips the logarithm so what i get is that ln of a naught over a is equal to lambda over t and finally for a final step i can really just rearrange for the time getting that the time is equal to ln of a naught over a divided by the decay constant now for radioactive carbon dating a naught and a are taken from the samples and i've just shown you how we could calculate lambda the decay constant which is about 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 12 seconds to a power of minus one and let's have a look at some of the limitations of carbon dating. First off, the ratio of carbon 12 to carbon 14 is assumed to be constant. In fact, this could be severely affected by fossil fuels, for instance, the burning of fossil fuels and the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It can also be uh, affected by some relatively external events, such as solar flares, which might disrupt that ratio, or a volcanic eruption, on the other hand, might also disrupt that ratio. Our second limitation is that because carbon-14 has a half-life of around 5,700 years, it may not be used to date objects which are extremely old. I'm talking about millions of years. And uh, the reason for that is simply because the half-life of carbon-14 is not long enough. Okay, folks, thank you very much for watching this video. We've covered quite a lot of material on carbon dating. Hopefully that makes sense. If there are any questions, do let me know. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.